Good morning, everyone. I thought I'd take you along my day today specifically to talk you through some of the things that I wish I knew when I first started my fitness journey. And to give you some perspective, I've been kind of on and off a fitness journey for the better part of my adult life. In high school, I was very active. I swam competitively. I was into skiing and track and like all sorts of different things that I tried here and there. But the point was I liked being active and that was fun for me. And so once I got to college, that sort of changed because suddenly there were so many more distractions, right? So I've been on this fitness journey for the past 10 years now, I'd say, and I finally have started to hit my stride in this last year. So I wanted to talk with you a little bit more about what, I don't know what kept me on this journey. So first things first, I think it's critical to stay active. Uh, it doesn't really matter what you're doing, as long as you love it and you're willing to stick with it. So for me personally, I found my love in weightlifting and so I've been very consistent with that, especially these last few months or so. And I find that easy because I enjoy it. And so that said, I am at the gym right now. I'm ready to go. I'm gonna take some pre-workout and then I'm gonna go hit those weights. Don't you love my tired face? So one thing that I've learned through my fitness journey is I really like to dry scoop my pre-workout. Um, pre-workout isn't necessary by any means. The supplements aren't necessary, they just supplement. That said, I love pre-workout. It's definitely something that gives me that extra pump in the morning and I really like to dry scoop it. But you can't make fun of me, I'm not very good at it. I usually have to down it in like three or four attempts. So bear with me and watch my struggle. So far so good, I haven't spilled any. Wow. I've been dry scooping my pre-workout for about a month now. And that went down pretty easy. Y'all witnessed my best attempt at dry scooping. But anyway, I'm gonna go hit the gym and then I'll be back in just a bit with some more. All right, everyone, I am back from the gym. I had a really good workout, did a good upper body and abs workout, it was a lot of fun. But that said, it made me think of another piece of advice that kind of helped them on their progress too. Um, one thing that I wish I knew from the get-go is that you do not need to reinvent the wheel. You do not have to create your own program, especially when you're still trying to figure out what it is that you're doing, right? If you're brand new to the activity that you're engaging in or you're kind of rusty or whatever that looks like, there are so many different resources online that can offer you guidance as to what to do. So whether it be, you know, a paid subscription to a fitness, whether it be different Instagrammers that post their workouts and step-by-step -step how many reps and how many sets they did of each exercise and they record each individual exercise. So that's really cool. Otherwise, even if you just do your research, do a quick Google search, there's tons of resources that help you with workout splits, um, how to perform different exercises. YouTube's a really good resources for that too, to get proper form. But nonetheless, do not feel like you have to come up with your own program when you hardly know what you're doing to begin with, right? So that's kind of where I started. <laughs> I had no idea what people were doing. I had no idea what I should be doing. And I just found people that I, you know, that had the results that I wanted to attain in their health, both in their physique and in their mental process behind working out. And I just started doing what they were doing and got some good traction that way. So I hope that makes sense. I will check in with you in just a bit with the next tip I have. Another thing that I've learned in recent months, really in the past year, I would say, is that nutrition is key. And so regardless of what style of diet you're on, I'm personally on more of a plant-based diet at this point, but you know, whether you eat meat or not, eat dairy or not, whatever that looks like for you, the critical thing is that you're getting a good balanced diet between fruits and vegetables, proteins, grains, and making sure that they're really good quality. That said, eating a clean diet, not perfectly sustainable. So I follow about an 80-20 rule where yes, I drink a nice green smoothie in the morning, 
but you know, once or twice a week maybe, I'll indulge in a little bit of ice cream, right? The point is, I thought for so long that I had to eat perfectly clean all the time, and I found that that only made me want to binge the processed food that much more. So instead, I allow myself to essentially eat what I want while making sure that the majority of it is in a more clean, holistic form so that I don't feel guilty one way or another what it is that I'm putting into my body. All right, you guys, as I'm getting into bed here, this very fresh looking face, you're seeing it all today. Um, but I just wanted to wrap up this evening with my next tip. That and that's the importance of a good night's sleep. Now don't get me wrong, everybody knows that getting a good night's sleep is critical for optimal function each day, but I don't think people realize just how critical it is in the healing and repair process. And especially if you're going on this fitness and health journey, it is essential that we allow our bodies the proper amount of time to rest and to heal and to repair. So yes, rest days are important, sleep is critical. Everybody's different in how much sleep they need. I tend to do pretty well on about seven hours of sleep. I generally do wake up around the same time and do so pretty well. So one, getting enough sleep is important. Once you've got that nailed down, I think it's really essential too to figure out a consistent sleep pattern. So going to bed around the same time, having some sort of wind down nightly routine to help calm your body so that it's set and primed and ready to sleep by the time you're actually going to sleep. And then waking up roughly around the same time each day too so that your body gets into it's into a rhythm that allows it to rest and heal and process. So yeah, at, on that note, I'm gonna get off my phone here. And yes, I have been using my phone to record this video. I'm gonna read a book as I wind down a little bit for the night. I might only last about 10 minutes though of this book. Yeah, I'm pretty sleepy today. And so then I'm gonna hit the hay and I'll catch up with you guys a little bit more in the morning. All right, so my next recommendation has everything to do with water intake, especially if your goal is to get into fitness, start a fitness journey, it is critical to up your water intake as you get more active. I think that people are very good at not drinking enough water to begin with, you know, whether they're into fitness or not water consumption could probably in most cases be increased right i've heard it said that you should drink at least half your body weight in ounces every day so for instance if you weigh 140 pounds you should be drinking 70 ounces of water a day that doesn't factor in any caffeine intake pre-workout pre-workout you guys it also doesn't factor in any sort of physical activity and so I would definitely use that as a benchmark, bare minimum on your rest day without any caffeine. And even increase beyond that, if you are going to be active, working up a sweat on any given day, taking pre-workout or, you know, and taking some sort of caffeine. I'm a big coffee drinker too. And so as much water as you're able to consume, not only will it help to, you know, help your body perform its natural functions because so much of our body um, is made up of water. It'll also help to keep your body hydrated, uh, replace any lost fluids, help flush out stuff that isn't necessary, keep digestion moving forward in a positive direction, <laughs> and just overall keep your body doing what it needs to do at its optimum level. So I couldn't recommend staying hydrated enough. If you're looking for any tips on like how to increase your water intake, there's so many different water bottle options out there. So mine is actually a Starbucks one that I got a few years ago while I worked there. But I highly recommend getting a cute water bottle because why wouldn't you want to drink water out of a cute water bottle? A lot of people, myself included, really like to drink water out of cups with straws even. So if that's you, definitely make the investment. It's definitely worth your while. Nonetheless, definitely find a water bottle that you enjoy drinking from. I know that sounds weird. 
But just like I said, some people need the cute thing or the straw thing to get them to increase their water intake. Um, and be sure to really focus on that over the course of the day as there's a multitude of functions that depend on a hydrated body to keep up on the water. If you're not drinking water right now, go grab it, take a sip, comment down below that you took a sip with me. And I'll be back with my last tip very soon. All right, so I realized now, like a week later, that I did not finish filming this video. So here you are getting a nice shot of my morning face um, and the true reality of me going to the gym at 7 a.m. on a Saturday. Um, especially on a negative four degree, or no, positive four degrees? I don't know, regardless, it's, it's cold, it's cold. But the last thing that I wanted to share with you is you should just have fun. I mean, the point of this is for it to be a lifestyle, not a diet. And I know, you know, that goes back to the first point of do what you like, but just to not take it so seriously. If you eat a cookie one day, you're gonna be okay. Uh, just doing so in a more moderate, moder in more moderation. Now, if that's all you eat for three days straight, we should probably reconsider that. But if you eat one cookie one day, you're gonna be fine. The point is to do this from a standpoint of making it a lifestyle and making it sustainable. If you decide to go out for a night with the girls, then go out for a night with the girls. You're gonna bounce back, even if you're a little struggling the next morning. Don't take this as a crash diet sort of situation. Just enjoy the process, enjoy the journey that you're on. Make incremental changes to your life so that these changes are sustainable. Anyway, I hope that this video helps. I think that these were things I wish I knew way sooner, so hopefully I can speed up some of that process for you. If you have any questions, feel free to throw them in the comments below. Otherwise, uh, definitely give this video a like if you liked it. Uh, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you later.